Hello and welcome back to Ross Taylor Woodworks. Uh, this time we got a Sheraton uh, Cherry One Drawer Stand. Um, this was uh, completely covered in paint. I've already stripped it. And uh, this video is going to be about uh, touching up all the little paint spots that are left. Uh, ended up uh, stripping this three times uh, to get all the paint off. Uh, and there's still a lot of little paint spots on it that have to be covered up when I do the finishing. Uh, stripped it three times and went around and uh, picked all the corners and tried to get all the paint out of the corners and crevices as best I could. But inevitably there's going to be some paint uh, that's going to have to be touched up. So I'm going to go through the finishing process on this and uh, show how to do all the uh, touch-ups on the paint spots. Now as far as the uh, drawer, uh, this was completely painted uh, inside and out. All the edges were painted. Uh, front, uh, the bottom was not painted, but there was a little streak of paint right here. Left, uh, I'm just going to leave that. I'm not going to worry about that. But the only way to strip this was to take the drawer completely apart um, and then sand all the parts. And there's some uh, spots here. Uh, these are little uh, chips in the wood. Little defects in the wood that are going to have to be touched up. Inside here I'll just be doing a uh, shellac. Uh, so as I'm doing that I'll just touch these up to try to match the color of the inside. Um, on the end of the dovetails here, uh, paint soaked into the and the end grain of the dovetails, those will have to be touched up. But that was the only way to uh, strip the drawer. Uh, was take it all apart and sand all the parts, sand all the paint off. Uh, to try to chemically strip this, uh, it would turn into a white stain. Once you liquefy the uh, paint, it would just turn into a white stain and it would be impossible to get out of the corners. And it would be impossible to uh, sand it clean. On the top here, uh, there's one little spot here. Uh, there's a little divot right here. I'm actually going to patch this. And then there's another little divot here, that, um, just a ding, and there's another little ding here. I'm going to leave these alone and just do some touch-ups on that. And there's a little crack here, I'm going to touch that up. Now at this point I just have the top sanded to 100 grit, I haven't done the finished sanding yet. And the uh, hole inside here uh, was completely painted, uh, the inside of the drawer frame. Uh, the inside, everywhere on the inside here was painted. Uh, so it's very difficult to get the paint out of the uh, inside here. Now on the top here, it's still a little bit messy. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about this because the uh, top will cover this if I don't get this uh, sanded off. But this uh, paint was just uh, literally like chewing gum trying to get it off. I don't know what kind of paint it was. Probably some sort of a latex paint. All right, first going to do that uh, chip on the edge of the top. I'm just going to take a chisel and make a triangle shaped uh, cut out. I went down about an eighth of an inch and just going to glue a piece of cherry in and let that set up. Now I'm going to do all the sanding on the base. Uh, this won't take too long. Uh, start with 100 grit and work my way up to 150 grit. Okay, now we're going to finish up that little patch. I'm first going to plane it flush. Now I'm going to finish sanding the top. Uh, initially sanded with 100 grit. Now I'm going to switch to the random orbit sander with 120. Then the palm sander with 120. Then install the top. And finish it off with 150 grit. Now we're down in the finishing room. We're going to start finishing. I'm going to use uh, shellac as usual. Now for many years now I've been using shellac out of the can. I used to use the shellac flakes uh, and mixed it with alcohol, but the flakes got very, very expensive at one time and I switched to the uh, cans. Now it's very thick when it comes in the can, so I'm just going to cut it in half with alcohol. Now I'm going to get ready to finish. I'm first going to clean off all the dust from sanding. Now the first step is to put two coats on to seal the wood and to get a preview of what the final color is like. Now 
Then after those first two coats dry, I sand it with 320 grit gold paper. Okay, now I'm ready to start the touch-ups. Uh, first, going to start on the drawer. Uh, I want to make sort of a yellowish-brown color to sort of blend in with the color of the inside of the drawer. Uh, for this yellowish-brown color, uh, it's burnt umber and raw sienna. Okay, now I'm going to start on the touch-ups on the outside here. Uh, I'm going to make sort of a dark cherry color. Uh, for the most part, these three colors, uh, Burnt Umber, Venetian Red, and Van Dyke Brown. The only thing to be careful of here is not to use too much red. Uh, you can very easily get it uh, too red. After putting the initial two sealer coats on the stand, I noticed that the uh, cherry has a lot of white paint in the grain and it's quite visible. So I'm going to do another step after I do all the touch-ups here to try to mask that white paint. And I will demonstrate that later in the video. Now on the inside of the rails here, there's sort of a hazy white residue of paint. Uh, I'm going to just brush a coat of sort of a brownish gray color on the insides of the rails here. And the brownish gray color is Van Dyke Brown, black, and white. Then I'm going to flip the stand over and do any spots that are visible from underneath. Uh, go back to the cherry color for the legs. Then for the bottom of the rails, I'm going to go back to that uh, brownish gray color. And also the underside of the top, there's some paint spots uh, on the underside of the top. I'm going to put a little bit of that brownish gray color around the edge here. Okay, now I'm going to do that next step after the touch-ups. Uh, once again, the wood had kind of had some white paint in the grain. Uh, it had kind of yellowish cast to it, so it's not very appealing. So this is something that's uh, not uncommon on older furniture. Uh, it's called a red wash. I'm going to use uh, Venetian red and some black. Uh, it's just like a red oxide pigment. And as you see, as I brush this on, uh, it reddens up the cherry. And it cancels out the kind of yellowish greenish cast that the uh, old paint left in the wood.
After I'm done with this step, I'll put on about uh, four or five more coats of shellac. Now I'm brushing it on the top. Now after I did the top, I realized it got a little too streaky and didn't come out as nice as the legs in the uh, base. But I decided just to leave it alone. I don't think it'll be a problem. Now after putting on four or five coats of shellac, I'm going to sand it again with 320 gold. Now I could just stop right here and wax it. Now since this is for retail sale and going to an antique dealer, I'm going to put two coats of acrylic on the entire piece. On the base area, I'm going to use a spray. And on the top, I'm going to use two coats of acrylic. Now the final step is to wax the entire piece. Now the inside of the drawer here, I'm going to use the paste wax of the steel wool and rub down the entire inside of the drawer. This will darken up the inside of the drawer and make it look kind of dirty and old. Now you can see after buffing it out, uh, it looks kind of dirty and worn and old. And you can see where I did the touch-ups. I just made it look like dark streaks in the wood. And I touched up the dovetails on the end there, darkened those up. Now I'm usually not a big fan of uh, finishing the insides of drawers. But this gives it a nice uh, finished look. Now for the rest of the stand, I'm going to use my liquid wax. I first rubbed it with the maroon pad and then fine steel wool. And just apply the wax and then buff it out. This is how I make my liquid wax. I just take some paste wax, a uh, little couple of scoops uh, out of the can and put it in a jar, and then dissolve it with naphtha. And then shake up the jar and dissolve the wax in the naphtha. Okay, I've got the uh, stand all done. Uh, I got the knob back on. Uh, this was the original knob that was on here. Uh, so strip that as well and uh, just do the same finish as the rest of it. It's a little bit small, but it's what was on here, so I just put that back on. I wasn't originally planning to do a video on this, uh, but I got halfway through it and realized uh, oh, that would make a good video on uh, showing the touch-ups, all the little paint spots, uh, and then doing the final finishing. So I kind of did a detailed video on that. And the uh, red wash uh, came out great, uh, gave the stand a nice a rich uh, cherry color. Now as I mentioned previously, the top got a little uh, streaky, but in the end it looks fine. Um, usually when something doesn't go quite right, I uh, usually don't worry about it too much. By the time I'm done finishing it, it usually looks fine. Uh, one thing I have left to do is to put some uh, pads on the feet here. Um, these legs do look a little strange. Uh, I'm not sure if they were cut down or not. Uh, they look kind of stubby on the bottom here. They probably were trimmed off at some, at some point. Uh, but just left that alone. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Uh, I'm just going to put some felt pads on here. Pads with a nail on it. Uh, it uh, all came out uh, looking great.